Welcome to part one in our winter horse play series. You know, a lot of times we can't get out and ride in the winter time. I have a lot of friends that uh, it's too cold for them, uh, they don't have a nice facility like this, or getting the, the, uh, the rig out is a little bit treacherous. There's still things that you can do with your horse, giving yourself all that 15 to 20 minutes of some good quality time to work on the balance, work on your connection with your horse, and also warm yourself up and along with your horse and get some good exercise. Most of these are going, the articles that I'm going to share with you, the exercises I'll share with you, have to do with my interpretations of classical dressage work in hand. So let's get started with some of those principles. Of course, before I ever start with asking my horse to pick up, develop some self-carriage, to find more rhythm, I might want to start with a nice stretching over the top line. So I invite you to go back and review the bolero exercise that's also available in these Tip for the Ride articles and to, uh, where I talk about stretching your horse out over the top line, checking out what their attitude is for that particular day, and really saying, let's get, re get ready to start to dance a bit. Go back and review the bolero. The work in hand, as I understand it, primarily develops self-carriage and self-confidence, both in you and in your horse. It's the ability to pick the shoulder blades up and back, to allow the uh, hind end to come in and have a place to be able to engage, to develop a positive attitude that understands that there is a balance in our movement, that it's not about casting the shoulders or throwing a hip, it's about finding this place where it weighs nothing. Mr. Hunt and Mr. Dorrance would have called it a soft feel. Our dressage friends are going to call it the beginnings of self-carriage. Um, uh, uh, our Domo Vaquero friends talk about it as lightness. All of those things come together in this little series of movements that we're going to do in a posture called work in hand, as I understand it. So let's get started with understanding the use of the outside rein to help the horse to balance and developing what I call the rein triangle that helps to establish your position in a work in hand posture. You'll notice here with Tilly that at this particular time the reins are in a pretty relaxed position, definitely very casual. Somehow I want to establish that outside rein. I want to put a feel on it. It's not really a tug, it's not a pull, it's just a caress, a suggestion that needs to go into that outside rein. So I'll establish side one of my rein triangle by simply pulling down here a little bit on this rein until I have a straight line on the outside of the bend, just a, 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 a straight line from the corner of her mouth over here to her main line here. That's side one of that rein triangle. Side two starts from here at the main line and comes down about to the point of the shoulder. You'll see that side one is intimately affected by side two. If I pull down on side two, then I make a connection to the outside rein there to the corner of her mouth on that side to side one of my rein triangle. Side two is controlled by the hand that is closest to her tail. It also is the hand that's going to hold your whip. Now notice that I'm holding the whip as if it were a sword rather than as if it was a ski pole or how you're going to use it when you're riding. This is turned over so that my little finger and ring finger caress the butt of the whip and my thumb, my pointer finger, and my middle finger form sort of an okay sign. 
that holds, uh, that just caresses around the whip. It's nice and light in my hand. My thumb, pointer, and middle finger are what's going to caress the rein and put a little down pressure, a little feel on side two of my triangle, which of course affects side one. So I have my side one, pull down here a little on side two, and I have this nice two sides of my triangle. Now the third side comes about from the point of the shoulder over here to the corner of her mouth. It's going to be controlled a little bit. Control's not quite the right word. It's going to feel, uh, I'm going to feel for this third side of my triangle with my hand that's closest to her nose. It's my active rein. It's my rein that slightly keeps her bend towards, uh, looking towards me. It's also that rein that says, if you push down, there'll be a little resistance. If you pull up, there'll be a little resistance. If you find this magic place where you weigh nothing, where there is lightness, where we still have a connection going on, a conversation, but it weighs nothing in my hands, that's the place where my uh, active hand, my hand closest to their nose, will also weigh absolutely nothing. So as I make my rain triangle, what am I asking of the horse? I'm asking her to come from here where she's really heavy on her front end to pick herself up, bring the shoulder blades up and back a little bit, to put a little wrinkle here in her jowl, to prepare her body to say, okay, I'm ready to go do the dance. Similar to when the conductor taps his baton and says, get ready, symphony, to play, it's that preparation that comes right before. I'm asking her to get ready to play this piece of music, to do this little dance, to accomplish a small task with me. Here's the whole sequence together. Develop my rain triangle. Pull down here on side two until I have a connection with side one. Find my whip and my rain. And side three, a little feel right here to the corner of her mouth. Now you notice that she's picked herself up and she started to say, what is it that you're going to ask of me, Alice? She's already anticipating the dance that we might do together, which is the next step in our little series here, where I become a post and she steps around me, carrying her energy from her inside hind to her outside four, inside hind to outside four. Notice that my whip just caresses the air. It just pushes the air to ask that hip to step underneath. I pivot on the foot that is closest to her nose and let her carry her energy around me. Now watch how we'll stop this little exercise. I'll put a little down pressure on side two of my triangle. Oh my gosh. Her hip comes underneath and squares up. It finds a nice balance. I picture that side two of my rain triangle being in a, like a PVC pipe running down to the ground so that as I put that little caress on it, a little heaviness in my elbows, then it is not pulling back towards her tail or pushing forward or pushing out. It's just in that pipe and I'm sliding that rein down through it. Just a little down pressure. Let's watch it again here on the other side and then we'll go on to our second step where I ask the horse to make now a bigger circle and then a bigger square. So we'll see how this goes on the other side. Politely change sides here asking her to pick up on this, on this other side. Develop my rain triangle. There's side one. And I'll let her come on around here. Here's side two. Side three, just right here at the corner of her mouth. Now see a picture in my mind that she steps around me sideways. Right hip, left four, right hip, 
left four, right hip, left four. Now in my mind's eye, I'm going to see that I make a bigger circle. I'm going to turn my shoulders, and notice that my shoulder blades stay back over my seat bones. I'll turn my toes and ask her to go on a little bigger circle now. Instead of her pivoting around me, I go with her. She should weigh absolutely nothing here in my hands. If she were to get heavy on my right hand, on my side three of my triangle hand, I would resist that until she picked herself up. If she were to pull away, I would resist that until she found this spot where it weighs absolutely nothing. Now we'll work on rhythm here just a little more. My whip invites her to pick herself with a little more rhythm. Right hind, left four, right hind, left four, right hind, left four. Very nice. Good. I'll put a little down pressure on this outside rein. There's her hip, and I'll back her up for good measure. Very good. Yeah, good. Well, that'll do it for part one of our winter fun work in hand progression. Come back again and join us for part two where we're going to carry that out on the diagonal, our energy carrying it from the inside hip to the outside shoulder out on the diagonal. We'll play around with a little backup and then we'll start working in one hand work in hand. So until we see you again next time, join us on the website. These articles are also found on our blog and of course in Just Horses. Thank you for joining us.